railway uh, the world over has been considered as an engineering marvel because it was perhaps the longest railway construction done in the last decade of 20th century anywhere in the world which spanned over 7 years starting from the day of clearance which is a record by any standards all this required a massive technical inputs innovative technologies adopting new methods and that was ably handled by the kokan railway engineers under the leadership of the then chairman and managing director padma shri sridharan we have taken number of shoots on most of the project because it would be a great learning experience for the engineers and we are now we decided to convert them into training films two of which is what you will see now the first one is the film on the viaduct which has the highest piers of 64 meters height on panveli river near ratnagiri this particular viaduct was built under the supervision of chief engineer s gupta and deputy chief engineer lalit meghnani and his team of officers and the karbude tunnel which is still recently was again the longest tunnel in asia boasting of the first ballastless track in the country was uh, built under the chief engineership of mr vr kulkarni and uh, the deputy uh, was mr natarajan and his team both these and all the other bridges were also uh, designed and ably guided by mr lime another uh, stalwart in the field these films in our opinion would prove to be a not only a, uh, a historic importance but greatly educative technologies for the budding engineers the construction of bridges and tunnels on the konkan railway was the most critical activity which ultimately decided the final commissioning of the project 91 tunnels covering a distance of 84.8 km constitutes almost 11% of the total route length with some of the longest tunnels in the country Ratnagiri district alone has 54.92 km of tunnel there are a total of 2000 bridges covering a distance of around 27 km there are 179 major bridges and 1819 minor the geology in general consists of topmost crust 8 to 12 meter deep of hard laterite underlain by soft lateritic soil 4 to 8 meter deep below which are various layers of deck and trap varying from soft breccia amygdaloidal to hard compact basalt panwal nadi viaduct a deep and wide valley of an almost dry nala near ratnagiri was typical of the rugged landscape where panwal nadi viaduct is constructed the panwal nadi viaduct was by far the most formidable on its northern approach there was benewadi tunnel 1110 meter long and on its southern approach there was tike tunnel 4077 meter long the valley itself was about 500 meter wide and at its deepest point 64 meter deep from the proposed formation the only redeeming feature was that hard rock was available at a shallow depth from ground level for founding the piers and abutments among the various alternatives the most suitable was psc box continuous span bridge with ptfe and stainless steel bearings constructed by the incremental launching technique dr v v nuri of messrs shirish patel and associates mumbai designed the bridge and messrs larsen and tumbro was awarded the work the proof check of the design was done by german engineers messrs weiss and freitag in this a continuous span of psc box girder having a uniform outer profile and span arrangement of 1 by 30 meter plus 9 by 40 meter plus 1 by 30 meter with an overall length of 423.25 meter was supported on piers and abutments through pot bearings with sliding ptfe surface at abutment a2 the continuous deck was to be fixed this resulted in the transfer of a major portion of longitudinal force to abutment a2 with longitudinal force on a1 and the piers limited to mu n 
where mu was the coefficient of friction at the PTFE bearings and N was the normal reaction at each support. Preliminary calculations with this configuration indicated tangible economy in the requirements of materials for the pairs. It was learnt that such schemes have been successfully adopted on TGV lines on the French railway. The box girder supports ballasted track and a cable duct with a footpath on one side. The deck was anchored at abutment A2 Mangalore end and articulated at abutment A1 Mumbai end. The articulation at abutment A1 was provided by expansion joint which was designed to absorb movements of plus 75 mm and minus 185 mm due to temperature, residual shrinkage and creep. Construction of hollow octagonal piers. The piers were tapered 1 in 40 and were hollow and octagonal in shape. The sides of the octagon were 1.594 meter each at the top. The thickness of the pier shell was 325 mm and was kept minimum throughout. The foundations were of open type on weathered and hard rock. To achieve speed of construction and quality of workmanship, a special slip form technique suitable for the octagonal shape was adopted. The slip form assembly consists of the upper distribution and working deck, hanging scaffold, yoke assembly, radial screws, horizontal turn buckles for adjusting the sides, slip form jacks, jack rods and sleeve pipes and shutters. To start with, 300 mm height was provided over the footing. This helped in proper aligning and fixing of shutters. After the assembly was checked and found correct, concrete was poured evenly. The rate of lifting and rate of pouring were pre-calculated. Initially, the rate was about 3 meter per day, which finally reached 7 meter per day. At any particular height, the theoretical dimensions, that is diagonal and segment lengths, were checked with actual measurement at sight. Normally, the readings were taken at 500 mm vertical intervals. Fixing reference pillars inside the pier onto the footing, controlled vertical alignment and the alignment was checked with respect to the four plumb bobs suspended from four main trusses. A maximum of 20 mm out of plumb at the top was permitted or 0.33 mm per meter. It has been possible to control the vertical alignment within this limit. Arrangements for PSC box girder. The box girder, 423.25 meter long, consists of 21 segments, each approximately 20 meter long. The casting yard was 80 meter long and located behind the abutment A1. The first 25 meter was the casting bed and it was fully covered. The precast box girder had a continuous support for the first 40 meter and then intermediate support at 10 meter interval up to A1. The continuous support was provided by a 40 meter long steel girder which was supported by 50 jacks at every 5 meter. The jacks were used to adjust the top levels of the girder over which the bottom shutters of the box rest. For smooth movement of the precast box girder, machined stainless steel strips of 50 mm width were welded on top of the 40 meter steel girder which supported the bottom formwork of the box girder. Under the formwork, this consists of plywood fixed with steel plates and fitted with PTFE pieces of 50 by 50 by 3 mm size. These PTFE plates slide over the stainless steel plates during the launching operations. Temporary lateral guides had been provided on each column which were at 10 meter intervals up to A1 and then on each pier and A1. The temporary sliding bearing consisted of a steel plate 10 mm thick with elastomers on one side and PTFE strips fixed to the steel plate. These plates were introduced between the girder web and the temporary bearings with mirror polished stainless steel skin plates fixed on top of the trestle columns, abutment A1 and piers. The arrangement consisted of a vertical steel column fixed in the pier pedestal A1 column top with stainless steel plate welded on the side. During the launching operation, if the girder moved out of alignment, the lateral shifting was done by introducing a neoprene PTFE sliding bearing between the vertical side of the girder web and the vertical lateral girders. Two A-frames were installed on the top of A1 anchored in the pier cap. The jacks for launching obtained their reactions from these A-frames. At every 20 meter intervals on deck, 
Center line survey studs with metric scale with zero at the center were fixed. The alignment of the girder during launching was monitored by Theodolite Distomat with respect to reference points in the rear of the casting bed. Casting of PSC girder. On movement of the girder by 20 meter, the casting bed cleared the previous segment. Following this, the forms were cleared and readjusted. Sliding plates on the stainless steel strips at the bottom were reinstalled. Reinforcement tied. HTS strands extended along with ducting and inner tunnel form placed back in position, making the new segment ready for match casting against the already cast previous segment, which had moved further. Concrete in the segment was poured in stages. On achieving the desired strength, the segment was pre-stressed, which resulted in its connection with the previous segment. A spreader beam was placed on the rear end of the last cast girder element. The HTS strands were laid between the spreader beam and the A-frame. The strands were then locked onto a spreader beam. The pre-stressing jacks were used to stress the strands from the A-frame end. When the pre-stressing force was more than the frictional force, the girder moved. In each stroke, a movement of 180 mm was achieved. During the launching, the sliding bearings were continuously fed at each support. Excessive pier deflections, if any, were detected by means of limit switches mounted on pier tops. In case of excessive deflections at the pier top, these switches cut off power supply to the power pack used in pulling. In addition, there were limit switches placed behind the ram of jacks, which cut off supply in case of differential jack strokes. Incremental launching. A covered casting yard was set up at about 60 meter distance behind the abutment A1. The segments were cast in 20 meter lengths. A 30 meter long launching nose had been assembled in front of the casting bed and the first segment cast against the launching nose which was attached to it by pre-stressing cables to the webs of the first elements. These cables and the flange cables anchored in the first segment were stressed when the concrete attained the cube strength of 30 Newton per square millimeter. The segment was then pushed out of the casting bed by pulling two cables by Jack's Usha Ismail's model number 1800 MG mounted at abutment A1. The other end of these cables attached at the rear end of the segment was cast in the yard. Against this segment, the next segment was cast and the operations repeated till the launching was completed. The girder and the launching nose moved above the temporary bearings placed on the piers, abutments and columns behind the abutment. The bearing comprises a concrete pad confined by a steel box over which rests a 30 mm thick MS plate. On top of this, a 1 mm thick stainless steel plate was stretched. The sliding pads comprising a neoprene pad vulcanized to the mild steel plate at the top and PTFE at the bottom were continuously fed between the advancing box girder and the bottom plate. A similar method was used to guide the bridge laterally. As the bridge was on a downward gradient towards abutment 82, it will move downward by about 2 to 3 mm daily due to temperature variation during the day. The girder was required to be attached to abutment A2 to prevent movement as soon as the launching was completed. This was accomplished by welding the bottom plate of the nose to the insert plate cast on the pre-concreted pedestal. The launching nose, except that portion required for transfer of force, was removed. The end bulkhead diaphragm, the projecting portion of the buttresses, was cast and the longitudinal restraint bearings installed. Draped cables in the web were stressed and grouted and temporary bearings were replaced by permanent bearings in sequential order beginning from abutment A2. The work demanded a very high level of skill and precision. The final jacking force for the last segment was only 75 ton which showed the high level of precision achieved. This was appreciated even by the German consultants who felt that this was the best that could be achieved. It was for the first time that the concept of incremental launching of PSC box girder was adopted in India. For site conditions similar to those at Panwal Nadi Viaduct, this method has a number of advantages in terms of overall economy, the speed of construction and assurance of quality. The Panwal Viaduct was one of the best works on the Konkan Railway as far as technological innovation, workmanship and adoption of a structure most suited to the environment was concerned. Karbude Tunnel 
The Karbude Tunnel near Ratnagiri, 6.506 km long, is by far the longest in the subcontinent, apart from tunnels constructed for hydropower projects. This tunnel is under the plateau on the approach to Ratnagiri and the alignment is straight with formation on a rising grade of 1 in 150. The rock structure for this tunnel was deck and trap throughout. The north portal was started initially by heading and benching with steel supports but the full face was started soon after. On the south, due to the soft nature of the rock, the work had to be done by temporary support with heading and benching. Three shafts 65 to 107 meter deep and 6.2 meter in diameter were provided and work proceeded through the shafts too. Though the shafts were provided for construction and to progress work along more faces, they were later utilized for ventilation. Jumbo drills were introduced in September 1992 and the progress went up from 45 to 69 meter to 128 meter a month. The tunnel started in July 1991 and was completed on the 31st of May 1995. The preparation of tunnel sections was based on the schedule of dimensions and suitable for future